Hi, welcome to the Jesse James Beads Facebook premiere. Today I'm going to be working with the Summer Fun collection in Baby You're a Firework, which is so cool. The colours are amazing. And the project that I'm creating today is this. It's an opera length piece. Although if you wanted to use shorter chain, you could certainly make that a little bit closer to the neckline. I've doubled that up so it fits on the bust. So this piece is called the Baby You're a Firework Opera Length Necklace, which is a bit of a mouthful, but there we go. Loving the colours, loving the sparkle, adore these beads. And also I have a big passion for these geometric uh, cage beads as well. So I'm going to show you every single aspect of creating this piece today. And I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I do. It's quite a fun piece, certainly quite spectacular with those little firework explosions up on the collarbone area there. Or as I say, I've created it with quite a long chain so that it sits further down on the body, almost reaching to that kind of opera length levels. So in just a moment, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the beads that you get inside this gorgeous bead box. Again, that's from the Summer Fun collection. And I'm going to be using only two wire gauges today. Some lengths of 18 gauge, which is equivalent to one millimetre, and just some small amounts of the 26 gauge, which is 0.4 millimetre. Your basic tools are flush cutters, round nose and bent chain nose pliers. I've added in a couple of jump rings and some small lengths of chain just to make it sit slightly nicer on the neckline. If you'd like to join me down at the board, we'll get cracking on the first section, which is taking a further look at the bead box. First of all, I'd like to show you what you get inside your bead box because after I've made the project that we're looking at today, you've still got all of these fabulous beads and spaces left over. There's so much more you can achieve with this. So inside this box, I'm just going to open that up and we'll take a closer look. So many. So we will be using lots and lots of the items within the bead box. These are very, very cool. The spacers. We're going to be using the bead caps as well. I absolutely adore these cage, the geometric cage designs. Lots and lots going on and fabulous colours too. Now, I haven't uh, used the tassels in the project today. So you've got another couple of tassels and I particularly like these beautiful flowery ones as well. Absolutely gorgeous. So there's loads in here to shout about. What I particularly enjoy about these almost fireburst designs is that there's a great attention to detail on the rear side as well. So if all you did was to put that on a pair of ear hooks, you've got a beautiful, beautiful piece, no matter what angle you're seeing it from. So much in here to enjoy. So what I'm going to do is line up all of those beads and then drop a quick still image in so that you can see the order in which I'm going to be using them. I will give you a quick flash through up close and personal with the necklace piece on the board now. And I'll also show you again on the camera what order those beads are going to be used in. So if you want to press pause and then join me live when you've got your beads sorted, you absolutely can. So we're going to create this from the top down basically. So we're going to start by creating this bar at the top and then a second bar which is connected by a short length of chain. Now whenever I cut off chain I keep all of the very small pieces. They're absolutely wonderful for earrings but also great for connecting small wire work pieces so that there's greater fluidity in wear. Sometimes when you join the wire to the wire it becomes quite stiff. So this is lovely because it will have some movement and it's why the whole thing is jointed. So always keep your little offcuts to one side. It's really canny and it's very good for the environment. Let's not waste anything. I'm also going to be adding in a couple of jump rings, which I'm just going to pop over to the side. These are about five millimeter outer diameter and they're just that standard silver plated copper. So we're going to be utilizing some of those. We'll create this bar second and then a drop bar and then a little tiny spacer. And then I'll show you how to create just one of these drops, utilizing those really cool bar spacers and the geometric cages. If you want to add a second, the technique is exactly the same. So let me just show you the beadboard now.
So I will drop a still image in so that you can see that in its complete glory. But that's the basic idea of what we're going to be working with today from the Baby You're a Firework Summer Fun collection. So I'll drop that still image in now. What we're going to do then is start working on this piece at the top. Now, if I just pop this over out of the way, then I can show you how we create that. So our first wire that we're going to be using today is 18 gauge, which is equivalent to one millimeter. And this is around about the 12 inches or so. And I'm just giving that a gentle smooth through so that that's nice and straight and also has some good warmth to it just a couple of times through to make sure that's nice and smooth now i'm going to load the beads on and what i don't want to happen is if i accidentally drop the piece for all of that to go awry so what i'm going to do is estimate around about two thirds of the way along or one third from the other end if you prefer what i'm going to do is put quite a sharp right angle on the bar like so, allow that to come back on itself and then open it back round. And then I'm going to turn a small loop in this wire, which I'm going to wrap around once. So I'm going to go halfway around with the round nose pliers, bring the pliers back in and finish that loop off. Let me drop that back down so you can see that. So I've just created a loop. And again, this is around about two thirds along the way along that whole length of, of wire rather. So what I'm going to do now is grip hold of that circular shape that we've just made and take the tail, the shorter tail, all the way around on that neck section that we've created and just get that nice and flat. The reason I'm doing this and just smoothing any kinks in the wire out as I go is now I can load my beads on and this acts as a bead stopper. We don't want that to be coming undone. If you prefer to just get that tightened up now, it's much easier to give that a squeeze now before there are any beads loaded. And I might just do a second wrap there. That looks a bit neater actually, like so. So you can, if you want, add your chain at this point without utilizing a jump ring just pop it in before you turn that loop around and i'll show you that at the other end when we get there but for me for right now i don't want the chain hanging on the desk and knocking everything flying so again i'm just going to smooth that wire make sure it's nice and flat and what we're going to do is bring the bead board in and feed these beads on one by one so i'm starting with one of the gold disc spacers and then i'm going the small floral bead cap one of those gorgeous, it's almost like um, a rondelle crystal, followed on the other side by the small floral bead cap, and then we go for a spacer bead, like so. And then opening up with the large bead cap. Now these are such a glorious quality, they're so heavy and beautiful. And then the one that looks like a marble, the big blue, it's almost like captured blossom inside the resin. Finishing off with a matching large bead cap, one of these absolutely gorgeous gold spacer beads, and then repeating the smaller floral bead cap, the crystal rondelle, smaller floral bead cap, and then the spacer, one of the red crystals, red crystal spacer bead, and that beautiful patriotic red, white and blue and then what we're going to do is just repeat that in the exact mirror image going in the opposite direction. So we've got the red spacer, a gold spacer bead, small floral bead cap, complete with free dog hair. One of my dogs is very hairy, likes to shed everywhere. And then the blue crystal rondelle, small floral bead cap. These spacer beads are absolutely divine. I would 100% have a piece of jewellery made out of nothing but those spacer beads. Heavy bead cap going on now. There's a slight kink in my wire, so I'm just going to grip hold of the end there. I need to rescue my pliers from underneath the bead board. I'm just going to hold on to the end there and pull that down. And then we're going to continue with the blue marble-like bead. And then the large bead cap, 
base of bead and we're just going in reverse now to how we started off small floral bead uh, sorry bead cap crystal rondelle small floral bead cap and finishing up with that spacer bead so i'm going to pop my beadboard back out of the way now so it doesn't get knocked onto the floor which is a classic gem move i'm going to shuffle that down into the center so what i now need to do is all the while being respectful of those beads some of these are a glass base so you can't take the risk of crushing them so we're going to leave a tiny gap at the one end whilst we repeat what we did at the first side which is to put a really good sharp right angle coming up you can draw that back a little bit and then come in with those round nose pliers draw that halfway around to begin with take a look see if you're happy if the size of your loop is going to match it looks a little bit large so i might just rotate that round slightly like so and then draw the wire up and over the top if you wanted to add chain without a jump ring this is the time that you would do it so you'd pop the chain into position allow that to sit over on the one side and then continue to wrap now i'm going to take it off because otherwise i'm going to end up with an asymmetric piece so you just leave your chain in position grip hold of the loop shape but not where the wires cross over and you should be able to achieve that without crushing the chain you leave yourself a bit of space it makes life so much easier replicate that wrapping around the neck area and just give that a bit of a squeeze up like so so this is the first section that we'll be creating and i like to have a nice gentle curve on there i never curve my wire too strongly once you've got glass beads on there because you do have the risk of damaging your beads you can damage gemstone beads you can damage metal beads even if you're too heavy-handed so what we're going to do now is add some lovely coils and the coils let me just show you here the coils cover up the loops that join to the chain even if you use your jump rings to join chain in these coils will cover that up really really nicely so that's the next thing that we're going to do and what i would suggest is draw the tails of the wire down in kind of straight lines and i'll show you what i mean when i get there so if you draw them down in straight lines you could use a ruler if you prefer but i'm going to go for around about an inch and three quarters in length which I just lift that up slightly that will be about an inch and three quarters so i need my flush cutters to just come along and trim those ends away these sections are always useful you'll always be able to make little spacer sections with them so never throw them away and by never i mean if you've got hundreds of them then maybe you need to just put them in the recycling but uh, i tend to keep using them so i'm just going to make sure that i'm happy with the coils we've created like so pop some warmth into that tail residue I'm going to create a coil but for now I want my coil to come up at 90 degrees and the reason is I want to easily access this loop and add a small chain drop in in a few minutes so I'm going to do what I don't normally do which is come away at 90 degrees with that loop so I've started the coil moving around so I'm just going to switch to my flat these are bent chain nose pliers and get that coil generating and what you'd need to do is the exact same on the other side trying to get the same kind of size and shape so this has actually gone quite large in the center there so i will need to try and replicate that as much as i possibly can and bring that very very close to the loop on the end of our first bar so again i'm just going to pop in with the round nose pliers i'm going to try and replicate the size of the starting loop so that looks reasonably similar it's also slightly oval so rather than trying to fix it i'm just going to try and match it which is quite a lot of what happens in wire work jewelry so again just drawing that up as close as possible to the top of that bar and leaving them sitting up for the time being you can straighten them out a little bit earlier so what you will have here coming away is the chain that leads around the back of the neck coming from the top side and then from underneath in a few minutes we're going to add some little scrap residue chains so that we can add on the second bar we're going to make 
So I hope you've enjoyed the first section. I'm going to show you the second segment now and how to join them together. I will just drop that image in again, the still image of the bead, so you can see the order in which they are needing to be used on the bar of wire. So I've lined up the beads to replicate the design that we're going to recreate in just a moment and you'll notice I've left a gap in the middle and that's to remind me to just leave a little bit of space when we're creating this bar. So I'm just going to pop the bead board back out of the way again because I do tend to knock those things over and I'm going to put our first bar just up in the top out of the way for now. And I'm just going to be using a residue, a little bit of an off cut of some of my 18 gauge or one millimeter silver plated round copper wire. So this is a piece that I trimmed away earlier and what I'm going to do is just make sure that it's smooth and straight. Sometimes with your scraps you get little angled sections and you just need to trim that away which may define that you can't reuse but where possible it's nice to be able to reuse those. So I've shown you again the still image for this section, what we're going to do is just create a small wrapped loop. And this is around about, let's have a look, around about half an inch. I'm just going to turn that at a right angle. The length of wire I'm using is around about seven inches of that 18 gauge wire. And I need to make a really tiny circle. So the technique is the same. You can roll those pliers around to get that loop shape started, supporting the core wire and taking the tail over the end. So I've made a complete loop there. And what I'm going to do on the end here, these are very small sections of curb chain. It's just silver plated brass. And I've only got four links, but that's all I need. So I'm just going to pop that on the end into position. And I will show you now what you could have done if you'd wanted to add your chain into the end of your top bar earlier on. Now, this is going to be quite tight because it's a short amount of wire I've chosen to work with. I'm being thrifty. So I'm going to support the loop. I'm not crushing the wire area where it meets the chain and I'm not pressing down where the tail of wire crosses over the neck of the wire. What I want to do is to take that tail all the way around and you can start it off by hand if you like. But if your wire is too tired by this point, what I'm going to do is just draw that around with the pliers. It's slightly safer for your fingertips. And all, all we're doing is creating a little wrapped loop at the one end. So for me, I'm probably going to switch sides. And again, I'm not crushing the chain and I'm not crushing the wire. And I'm just going to turn that so that it seals around at the end there. Now you can do this with more turns of wire with a longer length of wire, but as I say, I'm trying to be thrifty with my wire at this time. It makes sense to reuse wherever you can. So I'm just going to make sure that the bar is fluid and warm before we start loading those beads on. Now I was really surprised to find that these very cool uh, cuboid black spacers actually fit on the 18 gauge one millimeter wire. So I'm just going to get these onto the bar now. So I'm going for three of the cuboids. What I might do is just bring my bead board back down like so. And we'll just slide these on. So I've gone for three of the cuboid beads or cube beads. One of those beautiful, do you know, it's almost a topaz color faceted rondelle spacer in a crystal or glass. And then I'm going to use some of these gorgeous round and these are just like the look of black spinel. So after I've added my first, it is a, a chubby rondelle. I'm going to add another one of those beautiful marble beads. And then another chubby rondelle in the black faceted glass, I want to say. And then I'm going to add one of these very sensuous looking dark blue uh, there's such a lovely colour combination in here, the really rich blue, before I add in another one and then a second of those round black faceted. Now there was a mental note on my bead board to remind me to leave space so that I can add a drop bead or a drop bar into this space later. So it's just a reminder for yourself. Obviously, you can't stop the beads from sliding down. If you wanted to, you could put a, a small piece of tape on there. But it's just a mental note to say, don't forget, leave a bit of space on the end. Adding one more of those 
let's have a look gorgeous topaz color ones and then those last three of the cuboid black beads now i don't think i've got quite enough wire here so i'm going to show you a firefighting solution so let's say we've misjudged what we now need to do is turn this end into a single unwrapped loop now adapting is all part of working with wire because sometimes we misjudge so i'm going to put my pliers whoops not those ones <laughs> onto that core of wire and i'm going to judge how much space i need to add the drop segment like so so i'm just holding that so you can see i need to leave a space what i'm going to do is just put a right angle on this end in the same orientation as my wrapped loop and i'm going to create an open loop now generally speaking i wouldn't use that what i would do is i would restrand on a longer section of wire um because there's a little bit of weight coming away from the dropper section but because some of these beads are clay it's actually not that heavy so if i'm making for myself i will absolutely do this if you're making it to sell then you would probably reconsider and just remake this bar using a slightly longer section of wire but again firefighting in a tutorial is more useful than me starting again and deciding not to show you my faux pas so here's my faux pas of the day i want to create a completely closed circle I don't have enough wire to create a wrapped loop so what i'm going to do is make this as strong as i can and i'm just going to squeeze the pliers open and closed like so my num num pliers just to make sure that that's nice and secure what we do need to do is add in that second section of chain and again it's just four very tiny silver plated brass links and i'm going to close that back up open and close like a jump ring and we've got our second bar in position now you will always need to make sure that you have a little extra when you're working with glass beads and wire anyway because when you curve what will happen is that some of that space will get taken up because the beads aren't all perfectly round you've got some square ones you've got some rondelles and their cores operate differently so because we left a little bit of space we've got some room to maneuver what I'm going to do now is show you how to create all of the components and then we'll assemble it all at the end. Much easier to work on adding sections to other sections when it's not got all of the chain at the top. So we're going to create those components and then we'll assemble at the end. So I'm just going to pop this next bar up and out of the way and you can see we're already starting to build the components for our piece of jewellery. The next part that we're going to create is this first bar dropper. Now, the way that this is created is very, very similar to the way that the spacer bead is created, but I'll show you both of them. So the first one that we're going to create is the drop with those lovely crystal shapes. Now for this to work, as it does in the demonstration piece, I'm going to wrap the loop to this bar. So I'm going to do that at the end of this segment, because as I say, it's easier to create the rest of this if we don't have to worry about that section dragging your hands down as you go. So what I'm going to do is feed my beads on in the order, which is one of the chubby black rondelle glass beads, one of the patriotic beautiful clay and crystal beads. And then we're just going to alternate that three times and you can see how wonderful my eyesight is there when i can't detect a hole that is one millimeter in size so what we're going to do is we're going to do this in small assembly parts as i just explained we just need to assemble in bits and pieces so there's quite a jagged edge on the end of this small off cut of wire so i'm just going to pop that out of the way and at the one end what i'm going to do is start by generating a nice coiled end so not too small, but not too large, starting off in the same way, like so. So I've generated that loop and then I'm going to switch to some flat facing pliers. In this instance, my bent chain nose pliers. And I'm just going to wrap that around. Small movements will give you better loops or better coils. I'm sorry about that. And then what we want to do is to get a nice right angle bend coming off the top here. So in order to do that, I'm going to pop my bent chain nose pliers in above that loop and then just twist the uh, coil, sorry, by hand. 
get that nice and straightened up make sure that it comes away in a straight line imagine that's 12 o'clock coming away from the top of a clock face and then we're going to feed on the beads now this order is relatively simple we're just alternating between those black sparkly faceted chubby rondelles and these gorgeous nice lightweight um clay beads with crystals or rhinestones in i'm not sure so alternating between those you can have as many or as few as you like i quite like the drama of having a long drop we're going to take those all the way down like so that recreates the necklace that we looked at at the very beginning of today's show what i want to do now is to generate a right angle and a coil but i'm not going to wrap it completely closed so again i'm going to allow myself some space above that crystal or glass bead and what i'm going to do is come away at 90 degrees forwards so it's at 90 degrees to that coil we created at the bottom. I'm then going to use my round nose pliers just to draw that around and around. Close that around so you've got the circular form. It can be a little bit smaller than that if you want it to be. And the length of wire was just an off cut. It's around about five to six inches. But what I'm going to do is just open that very gently so there's a good gap. And that becomes our next component. We're going to pop that out of the way on our ever-growing list of components over on the side of the board. So let me just move those over to the edge there. Our next section is going to be a short extender bead. These are really useful to learn how to do in any design. I'm going to show you two different ways to create a wrapped connector. Again, I think this was one of the very off-cutty off-cutty bits because it's jagged on both ends. You don't need a very long piece of wire if you're going to be using just the one bead. So this is about two and a half inches of 18 gauge one millimeter wire. I'm going to pop my chosen, it's one of these sultry dark blue beads. I'm going to pop that onto the end, into the center of my length of wire. Pop the pliers into position just to one side of that bead. Put a right angle on one end. Pop the pliers in on the other side. I don't need a huge amount of space, just enough. So pop a right angle going in the opposite direction. Now there are two ways you can finish a link bead like this. Because we're not working with very, very heavy pieces, you can use an open loop or you can use a wrapped loop. So I'm going to show you the open loop first, which will replicate what we're doing on this design. And we need this to be a large loop because this is going to attach inside the centre of one of those coils. So that shape is not quite perfectly round, so I might just open that out slightly before I nip in and just gently trim away the excess. And then I just need to squeeze that into position and give it a really hearty nom nom with the nom nom pliers just to get that a really good safe shape. On the other end, what I'm going to do is connect this to one of our bars these cur curved bar spaces are absolutely magnificent to work with so what i'm going to do here is create a very small wrapped loop so come in to the tips towards the tips of the pliers and just rotate that around until you get that beginning of a shape pop the pliers back in and draw the wire all the way around now this is one millimeter gauge as i say 18 gauge wire which just fits in these beautiful curved bar spaces so i'm just going to push that closed and then take the tail around to create a wrapped loop so what i'm trying but failing to demonstrate to you here is that if you bring the spacer down to the base you can grip the center of even a very small loop without touching where the wires cross over or the thing you're adding into that wrapped loop. So I'm going to turn that around, lifting, if I possibly can, that glass bead to protect it. I'm actually not sure what the material is on this one. Now, this is where two pliers comes in handy. And you'll need to play with this until you work out which is your preferred size. So I'm just going to hold the top of that loop and you'll see that the extender drop or the curved spacer bar is still loose and I'm not touching anywhere where the two wires cross over. I'm going to ensure that the bead comes away from the action and I'm going to pull that tail all the way around like so. 
bring the tail up and around until you fill all of that space. Now, if you are nervous about the bead, what you can do is estimate where the centre of the wire is, create the wrapped loop with just a bar of wire on the end. Let me just switch grip slightly there. And then as long as you've allowed yourself enough space, you can do the very simple open loop at the other end second. I've done it the difficult way around just to show you that it is possible and also to show you the pitfalls of not planning. So this is the orientation in which it will hang, like so. And these are so pretty by themselves, I've made them into earrings, which I'll show you in a moment. But for the next section, what I'm going to do is add on a selection of coloured beads and as I say I'm just going to show you how to do this once if you want to repeat it so that you replicate the necklace that I showed you at the beginning of the show then you absolutely can. So for this next section I'm going to be wrapping on using some 0.4mm which is equivalent to 26 gauge or I can demonstrate for you with some 0.5mm or 24 gauge because this wire is just that little bit stronger. You can use either, but I know that this, the 24 gauge, is actually available in one of the Jesse James uh, wire collections. So if you don't have any 0.4, which is 26 gauge, you can absolutely use this wire, which is just slightly heavier, very, very strong and really, really worthwhile, the extra uh, oomph that you get with it. So all I'm going to do is start off by wrapping three times around the very top of my section of spacer bar, curly spacer bar. So I've popped the finer gauge, the 24 gauge or 0.5 over the top. And I'm just going to draw that all the way around. And just if you need to use the pliers to help you, you absolutely can. Very, very hot today in the United Kingdom. 31 degrees, which for England is really very, very toasty. So if your wire is a little bit tricksy, you can always give it a bit of a help with those pliers. What we're looking to achieve is to have three visible wraps before we introduce our first bead. So I'm just going to hold that out of the way. Naturally enough, that's quite a long tail. It's around about 14 inches of wire I'm using. I just need to get that nice and neat before I start sliding in the first bead. So I'm going to find the end of the finer gauge wire, find my first bead. Now the pattern that I used was blue, blue, red, blue, blue, red, and then two more blues. You can use whatever pattern that you want. I'm only going to show you two bead wraps because it's painful watching me trying to get beads onto wire. It fits perfectly on the 24 gauge, the 0.5 mil. So wherever you possibly can, use a slightly stronger gauge of wire. Let's push that back up to the top. And just hold the whole assembly. So I'm pressing the bead against the spacer and I'm pinching it tightly so that it doesn't have anywhere to go. The finer gauge wire came over the top of the spacer. I'm pinching it really, really firmly and I'm going to take the tail around and underneath the spacer bar, supporting that bead firmly, but not crushing it. I'm going to wrap once, twice and a third time before very gently pushing that up and you can see the effect is that the bead hangs off the side of the spacer bar. So I'm just going to add one more and then I'm going to refer to the piece that I've already made because as I say watching me trying to find bead holes is not usually a joy that people want to suffer more than twice. So again I'm going to push the beads up into position now I'm not crushing them because obviously you don't want to damage your beads, but I am going to push them between thumb and forefinger. So the pressure is going from above and below. Take that tail of wire all the way around the back and then just draw that three times around the core, which is our beautiful bar spacer. So if you continue in that pattern, what you will end up with is one of these. This shows you what it looks like on the one side. If you flip that over, you get a really different dynamic because you see much more of the wire. Now I chose to work in silver plated because I liked how it toned with the gold colors of the bead caps and some of the spacers and obviously these beautiful geometric beads at the bottom. So once you've wrapped the entirety of your bar, 
which I'm just going to cut this away so it doesn't fall apart in my hands like so. You'd come all the way down, as I say, went blue, blue, red, blue, blue, red, blue, blue, and that filled the bar. You could stretch them out a little bit more if you wanted a different number of beads on there. What I want to show you is how to add one of these fabulous geometric beads, and for this you'll need a jump ring. And what I'm going to do is bring the jump ring in. Now these are really good quality saw cut jump rings, so that means sometimes it's quite tricky to see the opening. I'm going to grip them and then twist them apart. So hopefully you can see there, there's a gap now. And what I'm going to do is find the point on the geometric cage where it joins, which is just here, and slide that inside. And I'm going to take the bottom end of my curved spacer bar and pop that in. Now these are one millimetre gauge wire that's created these jump rings and I think they're five millimetre diameter. You don't know what the gauges are I'm afraid. Fairly standard in chain mail. If that goes slightly awry you can give it a gentle squeeze just to get that to sit neatly and that's how you add the drop to the bottom. To add the second drop if you particularly wish to it's just another jump ring opposite the point at which you just added so you can see how that would extend the design down to that beautiful opera length drop necklace so i'm going to pop this out of the way and just show you how to assemble the whole thing bearing in mind you would want to finish adding all of those beads there so i need another couple of jump rings now and to bring those into position, what we're going to do is start at the top, remembering that we can add another jump ring at the top here with chain coming away, or you can macrame it, or even use a length of beading thread and more beads if you prefer. So I'm just going to show you on the one side, I'm going to find the split in our jump ring, which as I say is a little bit tricky when they're really good quality. And I'm just going to pop the jump ring through the loop in the first bar that we made pop in that short section of chain and close those two pieces together. So I'm going to grip that really firmly whilst I get my second set of pliers, like so. What I would say is don't be tempted to use the same jump ring to add chain going up. You will need another jump ring, or as we showed you earlier on, you can pop the chain in whilst you're creating that wrapped loop. Now what we need to do is cover up the mechanics of our design. So we're going to take that coil we created and just bend it sideways over the top. And in that way you get kind of like a floating seamless design, exactly the same on the other side. And then we're going to open up our dropper. I'm going to give that one more squeeze to make sure that that's nice and secure in its shape. Open that sideways just like a jump ring and then find the centre of our second bar and just fix that on. You can, if you prefer, create this as a wrapped loop and slide it onto the piece when you're creating your bar. So there are options to make your life easier, but I wanted to show you how to make all of the components. So I'm just going to put a little bit of curvature in this. And when you've added your second side on and dropped that loop down, it will define how much curvature you put in both of those bars. Do you know what I've forgotten to do? I've forgotten to add the loop in the section, the central section. So if you do, like myself, have a moment, you can just open this up like so. That one lives on the bottom of here. And again, the reason I don't edit these moments out is A, to show you how flexible wire work jewellery is, and B, to just prove that anybody, no matter how long they've been making jewellery, can have moments where they forget what they're doing. So I'm going to pop that through the coil at the bottom of the patriotic clay beads. And then we're just going to close this up. So you can open and close an opening loop like this a couple of times before it becomes dangerous. If you prefer, you can create a wrapped loop. And here we've got the wrapped loop to put on the second layer bar. Now, adding a wrapped loop to this second bar is tricky. What you could have done is to create all of the components and make this second bar section last. But I'm going to show you how to add it in because it's useful to know 
slide the gap over the wire in the centre there and it will just snicked into place in a moment like so. It's useful to have the knowledge of how to adapt as you go so I'm going to close up that loop and then I'm going to support the loop and take that tail all the way around. If you know how to fix an issue in the middle of a project it'll save you lots of tears and lots of time. So I'm going to go for three wraps before squashing that up. Decide which is the front which I think is that way. So I will want to trim that wire at the back of the design which is happily where it's sitting right now. I'm going to trim that end away and then just squeeze that closed so it's tidy. So hopefully you get the idea of how this is going to work. Let me just get the things out of the way so I can line it up for you. So I just need to finish that section off. Give that a squash so it sits around the back. And you can see how that will work in the same way as the demonstration necklace, which I will put on the board in just a second to show you the finished piece. So you just repeat what we've done on the one side. And then the last thing we're going to do is utilise these coils at the top to add one of those starburst droppers, which are absolutely magnificent. One of my favourite things about this kit. You've got a beautiful, it's almost like a London blue colour, London blue topaz colour. And then you've got quite a highly detailed rear side as well. They are gorgeous. So you could, if you wanted to, use an oversized jump ring. Uh, let's just see if this one will fit. If not, I'll show you how to make one. So what we're looking to do is to get that through the centre of the coil. And if it doesn't go, you can either get a larger jump ring, a length of chain, or you can indeed make a quick one. That's actually gone through, which is surprising considering it's quite a small jump ring. So pop your drop fire burst into position. Find your second pair of pliers and close up that jump ring. Now don't worry about closing the jump ring whoops, on the face of the design because you can spin that around once it's closed up securely. It's slightly stretched, so I'm just going to give that a squeeze. And there we go. Get that to sit down and I'll show you the finished piece again in just a second. You get the idea that it hangs there and it covers up the little bit of chain that connects everything together. So I'm going to push this over to one side and show you the one that I made earlier on in the day. There we are. So that's the whole piece. You can see the jump rings here are slightly larger than I had in my stock, but you can make them fit if necessary. You've got a fire burst on each of those collarbones. And again, I can drop in just before we finish the bead order for these several sections. On the demonstration piece, I just showed you, on the demonstration just now rather, I just showed you how to add on two of those smaller beads. Obviously, you can change up the order, the colour, and however many of those segments you want to use. I mean, you could even go for a navel grazing and use all four of those bar spaces, which would be something else indeed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today here on the Jessie James Beads Facebook page. I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have and you've had lots of fun creating your own variation of Baby You're a Firework. You don't have to have the full uh, lengths if you don't want to. You could stop that a little bit further up or you could simply have one of these beautiful curved spaces dropping from the centre. So there's multiple ways that you can change that up and make it your very, very own design. I'm Gem Hawks. I'm a UK based wirework designer and I have really had a great deal of fun working with this bead box today. I hope you're having a great time. Lots of love and see you very soon.